Coach Dave, how can I advise my kids? How can I get them to do what I want them to do? Why is it that every time I give them some advice, it goes into one ear and comes out of the other one? Now, have you ever felt this way before parents? Because I know I have as a parent as well. It's like we go to our kids, we give them advice, we take the time to advise them as well, and they nod their heads and they say, yes, yes, I understand, I get it. I've, I've, I completely know what you're talking about, mom and dad. And the next moment, they're going and doing something completely opposite to what they agreed that they were not supposed to do. Now, if you've had this experience, I wanna help you over here right now by sharing with you my top three tips on how to get your kids to really listen to you. Now, number one, the first thing is stop giving them advice. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? The thing is this, have you ever got advice before? Of course you have. Now, when you have been listening to advice from someone, do you, re you probably understand it intellectually, but do you really feel that advice? Does it really penetrate your being? Do you feel it? Do you hear it? Do you see it? Do you f come up with colors and pictures and feelings inside of your body? Probably not. You're probably thinking, when is this guy gonna stop talking? <laughs> so instead of giving your kids advice that goes into one ear and comes out of the other, here are three things you can do that's gonna build the leadership muscle in your child and make them the leader that you want them to be. Number one, be an example. What do I mean by be an example? Walk the talk. How many times have you come back home from work, gone to the dinner table and told your kids, hey guys, it's dinner time, I want you to clear off all your mobile phones, all your gadgets and come and have dinner together as a family. Perfect, no gadgets. Now, after two minutes, who's the first person who pulls out their phone? It's probably you or your spouse, right? And then your kids turn around and what do they say? Hey mom, how can you use your phone? Is your, you made up this rule and you're following the rules, how can you can break the rule? Now, then you get stuck, right? So you turn around and moms think really fast. You look at your kid and you say, listen, honey, mommy has eaten more salt than you've eaten rice, okay? So until you become a mommy and make your own rules, until that happens, you follow my rules in this house, okay? Now, pretty cool, pretty cute, got yourself out of trouble, but what does that seemingly harmless interaction with your child have to do with them? This is what happens. It plants in a seed, and a seed that tells your child Hey, it's okay to break rules. Hey, if I'm in a position of power, just like mommy is, and she's made the rule, it's okay for me to break them. Now, did you have the intention of teaching that to your child? Of course not, you wanna teach them something good. But sometimes when we're sincere, we can also be sincerely wrong. Now, kid goes to school, grows up, starts breaking rules because they want to be in a powerful position, starts getting into trouble with the teachers, handing in the assignments late, you start getting calls from your principal, from the teachers, and you wonder what went wrong. So, leading by example, walk the talk. Show your kids, be sincere, be genuine, and take your agreements with them seriously. Look at them not as a little child of yours, but look at them as your equal, that you are talking to a human being. And just like how you would expect other humans to keep their agreements and promises with you, hey, let's pay it forward and make it work backwards. Now, how many times has that happened to us as well? When we tell our kids we're gonna pick them up at three o'clock in the afternoon and then we're gonna go and take them for a movie and then we're gonna come back home. And we call them up and sometimes we don't even call them. We just break our promise and say, oh, they're just the kids anyway. They're gonna, they, they should know. Mommy and daddy love them. So, you know, they know that I'm gonna break the, the, you know, break the promise. It's okay, they understand. No, they don't understand. What they do understand is that it's okay to break rules. And that's why many, many kids grow up to be children and young adults who find that breaking rules is something that has actually become part of their psyche, part of their behavior. And parents find it really, really tough then to break them out of it because that code has already been programmed in their minds. So what's the first one? Be an example, walk the talk. Number two, what can you do? Encourage, encourage, encourage. Now what does encourage, encourage, encourage means? It simply means this, when you see a child has done something that even if it's so small, but they've done something good, they've kept their promise, they've kept the agreement, the room is clean, they've done their homework, even though it could be so small, encourage them and tell them that they did a great job. Encourage them and tell them that, hey, you know what, I know it wasn't easy to do. It may have been easy for you as a mom or a dad, but as a little child, as a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old, even a teenager who's got other things on their mind, it could not be as easy as we think it could be for us. I know that it was not easy for you, but I'm so happy and proud of you that you did it. Good job, buddy. Well done. 
Encourage them. Encourage them when they fall that they can get back up again and they can do things by themselves. You want to build that muscle inside of them. You want to, sh you want to let them know and believe in their hearts that you got their back. Let me give you an example. I have a son, 14 years old. He comes over to me one day and he says, Dad, I want to be a Bollywood star. I'm like, what? I want to be a Bollywood star. I want to be the next Shah Rukh Khan. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> now I'm thinking, are you nuts? You have as much chance of being a Bollywood star as you know, Snowflake does surviving in hell, right? And now, I immediately want to tell him that, come on, you know, you said you want to be a doctor. You said you wanted to go and go and do law. You want to be a business person, an entrepreneur. I was going to remind him of, of all that stuff. So I decided, you know what? I want to encourage the boy. But remember, with encouragement comes a secret. You got to have a commitment at the end of the encouragement. So here's what I mean. So I went over to my son and I looked at him. I'm, I'm you know, a little bit, you know, laughing on the inside, but I mean, I'm here to encourage him. And I looked at him and I said, hey, Mikhail, listen, I think that you would make the most amazing Bollywood star in the world. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. You know what? You're not just going to be like Shah Rukh Khan or Salman Khan. You're going to be better than them. You're going to be the best Bollywood star in the world. I believe, I think that you can do it. <gasps> really, Dad? I'm like, yes. Now, your school play is coming up, right? So which part of your school play would you like to take part in? Now, oh, school play? I don't, know, I don't want to take part in the school play. I'm like, listen, buddy, you know, you, you just said that you want to be a, a big time movie star, right? So before you can be a movie star, you're going to first make it on the stage of the play in your school. Then you're going to go up to TV. Then you're going to go up to the movies, to the big screen. So we got to start. So which place, which role are you going to play? Now, what am I asking him for over there? I've encouraged him, yes. The next thing I'm asking for is a commitment. So he turns around, looks at me and says, you know what, Dad, I don't think I want to be a Bollywood star. So now, what, is, what has happened over there? Have I been the bad guy to my son by telling him, no, you can never be it and make him rebel and just, you know, make him dislike me? Or am I the guy who comes up to him like, not just a parent, but a leader, a coach, and to say, yes, I believe you can do it, but you got to take the first step. You got to make a commitment. Now, I have another father, a uh, father of one of the, the students in our training, and he came up to me and he said, Coach Dave, I used this exact technique what you shared with me on my son, and something amazing happened. I said, wow, what happened? He says, my son came over to me and says this. He says, Dad, I want to be a YouTube star. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, I want to be a YouTube star. And you know, YouTube stars make a lot of money. They got millions of fans all over the, all over the world. So I want to be a YouTube star, and I want to have the same thing too, and the same, you know, uh, um, success in my life. That says, okay, so what's the catch? <laughs> and the boy looks at the dad and says, dad, so now dad, because I want to be the star, I need to watch YouTube every day for research and development. Okay, I know where you're getting at, right? So the father says, you know, Coach Dave, instead of stopping there and starting advising him and yelling at him, I took your advice. I said, what did you do? He said, I looked at my son and I said, buddy, I think you can be the best YouTube star in the world. You're gonna put all the other YouTube stars to shame. He's like, really, Dad? Yeah, really. So what did the father do? Encourage the son, right? What's the second thing that he needs to do? He needs to get the son to commit. So what do you tell the son? Now, because I think and I really believe in you that you can do it, you need help and you need help to learn how to use the internet. So I'm gonna enroll you for an internet marketing seminar. Which internet marketing seminar would you like to enroll yourself into? Son says, I don't know, Dad, let me find out. So the boy, he found out a couple of internet marketing seminars, showed it to Dad, Dad decided which one he wants to enroll his son in, enrolled his son in one. Six months later, after attending the seminar, this boy's got his own website online, he's got his own payment gateway, and he's earning 3,000 ringgit a month on average on this website, simply because his father encouraged him. So, when we encourage our kids, it opens up an amazing, gold treasure chest of potential that allows our kids to tap into because you know what they know that we have their backs so to recap how to turn your child into a leader number one be an example make sure you walk the talk our kids are watching us and we want them to copy our good habits instead of our bad habits number two encourage 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 make sure that we encourage our kids and every time we encourage them we want to make sure that we get a commitment from them and we make sure that we hold them to that commitment because agreements must be kept now we're down to the last one number three let them drink some water. Now what does that mean? 
I remember three years ago, I was sitting at the poolside of the Regent Hotel in Singapore and I'd finished a training program. And I was relaxing there, it was, uh, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and my son and uh, a boy, they were swimming, both of them were swimming in a swimming pool at, at the hotel. And I was talking to the boy's father, Richard, and we were just having a conversation about the weather and about how he loves the heat of Asia, which was like, okay, <laughs> right? And as we're having this conversation, having a coke and just chilling out, having a very relaxing time, his son, seven years old, starts <laughs> drowning. And when that happens, I turn around, I look at Richard, I look at the son, and I look at Richard, and I say, hey, hey, Richard, your, your, um, your son, your son, he's drowning. And now Richard's still talking about the weather. He looks at me and says, ah, that's okay, Dave. Let him drink some water. I was like, what? Yeah, let him drink some water. And I was thinking, my goodness, can you imagine if it was one of us Asian parents? What would a typical Asian parent do? The moment the child drinks a little sip of water, the whole family is jumping to the swimming pool and rescuing him, right? Now, this boy on the other, on the other hand, what did he do? Father's watching him, it's a controlled environment, he's struggling, and after about seven seconds, he starts swimming. Now, here's a question I have for you. What do you think was planted in that boy's mind through that experience? Now, imagine you're two kids, Asian kid, Western kid, both of them having an experience, both of them drinking some water, both of them drowning, right? Now, the moment the Asian kid is like struggling a little bit, parents come in, save him. What experience does, what, what, what do you think goes into that child's mind? What seed gets planted into his mind? Yeah. I don't have to look after myself. I've got my parents who could be looking after me. Now, does he come up and write notes about it and makes a, a, a conscious uh, realization? No, of course not. It's sitting down the back of his mind. He doesn't know that he's learning that. His mind is being programmed right there at that very moment in time. Now, what about the other child? What about Richard's son? Do you think Richard's son would be coming out, climbing out the swimming pool, going to his dad and saying, oh dad, I just learned something amazing. Nah, he didn't realize, he wouldn't be realizing that he's actually learning something. And what do you think he learned? What seed was planted in Richard's son's mind? Yeah, that I can look after myself. You see, pressure creates diamonds. When we struggle, we strengthen ourselves. When we don't struggle, when we get people to do things for us, what happens? We weaken ourselves. So the most important thing, one of the most important things parents can do for their kids is to let them drink some water so that they can monitor how their child is struggling. Don't let them struggle too much. You're there observing them. When you see that they need your help for you to step in, by all means, jump inside, step in there and help them. However, if you see that they are struggling and they are learning something from that struggle because they're planting in the seed in their mind that, hey, I can do this myself, we know that we are strengthening them. So, what are the three areas that we can use, the three top tips in order to get our child to be leaders as parents? Number one, we're going to help our child to, by us being an example to them, we are going to walk the talk. Whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever agreements we make with our kids, we as the adult, as the parent, make sure that we keep our agreements that we make with our kids because they are watching us. Second, what is the second one? Encourage, encourage, encourage. We're going to encourage them that, you know what, if they fall, hey that's okay get up learn from your mistakes and try again change your strategy it's okay parents are there to encourage kids to show them that it's all right to fail that when they try and they try again life failure is just a learning experience and finally let them drink some water meaning let them struggle because pressure creates diamonds don't let them do it all by themselves if they need help step in if not let them continue so that they remind themselves that they are strong enough to do it by themselves see this is why when kids grow up they turn out, many kids turn out to be followers and they turn out to be mommy's boys and many kids, well not many but actually only a few actually turn up and grow up and become leaders and the leaders of men, the leaders of women will most follow in line and become followers. So remember, let your child drink some water. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you at the next one.